Okay, uh, so in this video we will take a look at the modifications I've made to Marlin, uh, so to the firmware up until now. Uh, so the video setup is a bit different uh, for that reason because I have actually physical things to show you. And um, yeah, just tell me if you like it because I'm trying to upgrade video quality so I feel like this adds uh, a bit more to the video. And uh, it also requires a bit less work in editing uh, after, so that's even better for me. So, uh, the basic setup is uh, I'm running uh, OBS, so it's basically like a stream. I'm running OBS with uh, two video inputs. So you have uh, the webcam right here, you have the screen um, that is being recorded, and I also have my phone right here running Droid Cam. Uh, so it's connected via Wi-Fi, so you may have a bit of delay, uh, but still, I'm going to be able to show you actual physical results. So um, yeah, for the people that are new to this channel, um, what I'm trying to do is create an MMU2 clone um, and improve it based on the uh, user feedback from the people that have already bought it, and uh, to also have, I also have a few goals for it. So first, uh, I needed to stay below $150, so I'm trying to make it as cheap as possible. Uh, and that price is uh, even more incredible when you take into account that we are actually adding upgrades to the printer. So, um, because in that is a new mainboard, uh, a new 32-bit mainboard, uh, new drivers, and uh, a color touchscreen. Um, so, the second goal was to make it compatible with any printer, and that's also why and one of the reasons why uh, I have to change the mainboard. Uh, so, because not everyone has the Prusa MK3s uh, or 2s, um, that's why I want to make it compatible with any printer. So, uh, if you like this uh, idea and uh, want to see more, make sure to subscribe and let's get right into the video. Okay, so now let's look at the code. Uh, so right now we're in the configuration.h file. So this is where all the uh, features are defined. And uh, what I needed to do was to create a feature. So I placed it right next to the um, MMU2 uh, feature, I believe. Um, or a bit higher, let me get that. Okay, I will search for it, it's a bit higher. Okay, so uh, here I defined my feature, which is called MMU clone. Uh, I initially called it MP MMU, um, and this was a mistake, and I'm going to show you why uh, a bit later. So once that was done, um, I had to create uh, two files uh, related to the feature I wanted to add, uh, and I called these uh, MP MMU, uh, so .cpp and .h, and they are placed um, right next to the MMU2 uh, feature, so we, it's, we, it's logical to place them in the same uh, uh, place. So it's in feature, um, so in the source uh, code. So uh, we have both the MMU, mpmmu.cpp and mpmmu.h um, in here. Okay, so let's first take a look at the header file. So a header file is a file that contains all the declarations. So we, th we then use the hashtag include, so file name.h. So here our file name is mpmmu.h. Uh, in the C++ file related to that header file, uh, in order to have these declarations in our CPP. So this helps mainly to minimize the potential for errors because you know that all your declarations will be in that file. So the first line of the code is actually related to the exact feature. So the hashtag pragma once is a preprocessor directive that is used in compilation so that the current source file is included only once uh, during compilation. So this feature is not supported by every single compiler, but it's widely used. And as you can see uh, inside Merlin, it is uh, used in basically every single uh, piece of code, as you can see at the beginning here. Um, let's see one that I have, haven't written because that would kind of defeat the purpose here as well. Um, so yeah, that's it for the header file, or at least the, the beginning. 
So um, I then include the, okay, let me get back to the .h file. So I then include uh, the config file and create a class named MP, uh, MMU um, and declare a few public functions. Uh, so the one that is the most important here is the tool change feature, which is the one that is called when a new filament needs to be used. So the argument attached to that use um, uh, is um, name index, and the value of index is the extruder or filament number that we are looking for. Um, and like most variables in Merlin, it's in the unt8 um, underscore t format, um, which is equal uh, to an inside char in the same way that unt16 t is equal to an inside short. Uh, 32t to an unsigned int uh, and unt64 to an unsigned long. So the number uh, 8, 16, 32 or 64 that you see um, is the number of bits that are that make up the variable. So 8 bits being 1 byte. So you can easily understand that this means uh, that the 32-bit variable will be bigger in size but will at the same time be able to store more information. And this is why we're using an 8-bit here, because index can only have up to 5 values, so in our case. And if we stretch it to its maximum possible use case, it maybe has 20 values. Uh, so 8 here uh, is even a bit overkill. So 8-bit here is even a bit overkill, because it has um, 255 possible values. And I would be extremely surprised if you had over 255 tools or uh, filaments uh, loaded into your printer at once. So um, the reason to use 8-bit values and not 32-bit values all the time is mainly to reduce uh, processing time and memory usage. So in a computer this seems trivial, but in the case of a printer, a uh, mainboard, and even more when speaking for an 8-bit board, so ours being 32-bit, uh, it can make a big difference. We then create the object MPMMU uh, and associate it with the class MPMMU. So here, let me show you, um, right here and right here. Uh, and define it at extern because we want to use that in other part of the program. So um, this way we can call the MPMMU tool change um, and with the argument extruder number function in other part of the program, since it is a public function. Um, and this is used mainly in toolchange.cpp, as you may know. Um, and let me find this feature. OK, I already had selected it. So this is the one right here, um, as you can see. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it for the header file. Uh, but I think that this is a good time to explain my mistake so that I spoke about at the beginning. So when I first started uh, trying to compile the program, I received multiple error messages, uh, mainly mentioning that the MPMMU class and that the MPMMU feature were not or not properly defined. And my mistake was that the feature and the class, uh, which are two absolutely different things, named were the same. Um, and this was causing errors when compiling. So that's why I changed the feature name to MMU clone uh, and I didn't keep it as MPMU because they were conflicting together. So now let's take a look at the CPP file. Okay, so now that we are in the CP++ file, uh, let's look at the beginning. So the first thing we do is include the Merlin configuration file. So this is what is included in the beginning of basically everything. And uh, that's to check um, if the feature is actually enabled. So here we see in line two an if function that actually controls basically the entire rest of the code. Uh, and if uh, the MMU clone is enabled, you will uh, run and compile that code. And this is mainly used to reduce uh, file size uh, and to make a build faster because you don't need all the features that are in Marlin. So if you don't have a magnetic parking extruder, you don't need the feature for that extruder. And basically, um, you don't enable it in the config that file h in the config uh, file, and the compiler uh, will not actually build uh, and compile the rest of this code. 
But here we have, have actually defined this feature in the config file and uh, we know that it's activated so it will run the rest of the code. So we then include the header file that we just uh, looked at previously, so the mpmmu.ah file, uh, and also include uh, Marlin core uh, header file. So uh, we then actually define the tool change function, uh, which is using the index uh, untat argument. And actually the index uh, argument will be um, the extruder number. Uh, so not the extruder number actually, uh, when you want to change extruder or change filament, uh, the decode command is T uh, with the number of the tool you need. So it can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, and um, this is what we are going to be using. So uh, we use a basic switch. So the switch function we goes through every case and if index is equal to zero, it will run that code. If it's equal to one, it will run that code. And what I'm doing is uh, sending uh, a serial uh, communication message. Um, and uh, depending on the filament, I'm telling the filament number. So um, that's it for the switch. It's really simple. Uh, and then we close the if, uh, and that's about it for the CPP file. So now let's build the uh, the um, firmware. Uh, so you can do two things. You can press Control Shift B and then select the right board uh, for you. So here it's on the top because I've already compiled it a few times. Or you can go in uh, the PIO little platform IO tab and find your board and then use build. Um, so once it is built, uh, if you want to do that as well, um, you will um, plug in an SD card and it should be right here. I will delete the previous firmware I have on that. So you can see the file type is cursor and normally um, the file type should be a bin for the firmware file. And that's because once it has already been, uh, let's say used by the board, um, it renames it to a cursor file so that it doesn't always recompile the tip if you still have that firmware bin file on your SD card. So we'll delete it just in case. And you will find your bin file in the in your working folder. You have PIO uh, and then built and then you will have your board name. I will open that in uh, Explorer. And in that little folder, you will find a firmware.bin file. So let you copy that to your SD card. You check that it's done. I will uh, take the SD card and I will switch to the scene um, where the electronics, uh, where the main board is shown. So that should be it. Yeah, that's it. So uh, let me grab my mic. You won't see me on the camera, but that's not really a problem. Uh, so here, let's focus on the board. It is already focused. So um, here I have my power supply turned on. Uh, I basically plug in the SD card. You hit reset. And then you will see a green light uh, flashing for about three seconds right here. And that's uh, during uh, when it's like actually um, building the code and uh, actualizing the firmware. So. Um, once that is done, you don't need the SD card anymore. You can just remove it. Uh, I will put it that right here. And let's take a look at the screen. So uh, honestly, this screen has a few good things and a few bad things. And uh, one of the good things is that it can send G-code commands directly. Uh, and that has um, a few you like really good things that come with that is A, because we're sending directly G-code commands, we go um, through every single um, well in security uh, and we don't need to start a print file. So we don't need to heat up any extruder, we don't need to have any temperature sensors, we don't need to have any um, uh, home switches. Uh, so we can basically run a bare bone system so without anything on it. Um, because otherwise, if you had to start a print, it would be longer, uh, you would trigger every single uh, security feature of Marlin, so the temperature, uh, minimal temperature uh, feature, and that would be just uh, a lot more work. Um, but as you will soon see, uh, it's really hard 
uh, to send decode because the interface is so small and you're not supposed to interact with such small things uh, on that type of screen because it's already a small screen as you can see from my hand size uh, and uh, having even smaller characters uh, it's hard but I will uh, try to do it so T zero okay here already misclick okay already a few misclick I should recalibrate it but I'm a bit lazy so I won't do it okay it's clicking a bit too much okay we'll recalibrate it because it's too hard so recalibrate it you go to screen you go to TSC adjust and you click on the dot once that is done it will go back back decode and here we're going to send T0 so uh, T is basically the uh, is the decode command to change tool as I've seen before um, and here if I manage to send it you can see that we receive change to filament hashtag one so that means that the code has worked exactly as planned because we sent uh, T0 so let's go back to the screen we sent T0 so the index case uh, the in index value should be 0 so it hits case 0 and then it echoes uh, on the server communication uh, filament hashtag one uh, and here you just saw one of the other benefits of that screen uh, but which was actually uh, a small problem at the beginning so I was trying to read the server communication from my computer so I had a little USB cable plugged in here that was going to my computer uh, and I was I had a serial um, terminal opened and I was trying to receive those messages and I was unable to find them and I did not understand why and I realized the problem when I just looked at the screen for two seconds more after sending the command it's actually because the screen also acts as a serial interface and when you send serial messages uh, it is the screen that receives them and that actually displays them so this is um, actually really good because that means that I don't need to have it um, plugged into my computer to receive the serial communications and that makes the setup a lot easier to test and uh, but that was a little problem at the beginning because I was unable to uh, really see uh, what I was doing. Uh, it seems like my joy cam has uh, frozen. I will just reconnect it. Stop. Okay. And I will try to reopen it. Uh, we don't really need it, but I want just to have it on and focus uh, right now so I will do that draw read cam client here start and that should be good okay and now we have it focused so um, that's it for this video uh, thanks a lot for watching if you liked uh, this video want to see more follow this project uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, like the video if you liked it um, and once again about the format of the video I've changed it a bit just tell me if you like it more or less uh, I found it a lot more interactive uh, but I don't know maybe if you don't want to see my face if you think that you don't need uh, to see specific things uh, like the actual physical setup was not really useful and a bit too much and I should just actually totally switch between scenes like have only one thing displayed at a time just tell me what you think, tell me what you prefer, uh, and I will make sure to uh, take your feedback into account when making my next videos. Um, and that's it. So, uh, see you later, and bye.